ancestors worked hard, and there wasn't much to spare. So if they wanted new clothes, they made them. It was just that simple. And their handwork often became heirlooms, handed down from generation to generation. Maybe life is easier today, and maybe we are in a bigger hurry. But we can still take time to create heirlooms, and that is time worth spending. Heirlooms by Design with Sharon LaMonaco is sponsored by Capital Imports, your passport for fine lace, embroideries, and fabrics, by Omnigrid, the most accurate and versatile products for the quilter, artist, and craftsperson, and by Quilts Plus, your authorized Bernina dealer. Now, here's Sharon. Hi, I'm Sharon LaMonaco. Thanks for joining me on Heirlooms by Design. My guest today is Linda McGeehee. Welcome to the show, Linda. Thank you, Sharon. It's nice to be here. Well, we're certainly glad to have you. Linda will show us some highlights from her award-winning book, Texture with Textiles, and explain just how to texturize fabric as soon as we return. So Linda, just what is texturized fabric? It's wrinkling, crinkling, adding beads, couching. Well, I hope you're going to explain some of these techniques to us, some of these words that you're using. We can take a look at some of the samples. Good. Couching is the ribbon that's been stitched down. Couching actually means laying something down and zigzagging or using a decorative stitch to hold it in place. Mm -hmm. There's actually layers of quarter inch ribbon, eighth inch ribbon, heavier threads, and beads in this particular handbag. The same techniques were used along the red area uh, on the vest and in the upper corner of the vest. Eighth inch ribbon, heavier threads. We have decorative stitching on wrinkled fabric and that's literally what we do, wrinkle the fabric up and we make it a permanent wrinkle so that uh, it's going to stay there as you wash and wear the garment. Oh, that's great. Down below, we have wrinkled fabric with applique. Mm -hmm. now, do you think I'm a wonderful artist? Oh, yes. The designs that you see in the applique are actually the interface, the lining of the fabric enlarged on a copy machine. Oh, for heaven's sake. So you don't have to be an artist to do that. Just simply enlarge the fabric. Over here we have more beads and heavier threads couched. We've even added a few little fuzzies. I was going to ask you what those fuzzy wuzzies were. Those are fuzzies. And it's layers of thread that's stitched in place. These are some heavier threads that ravel. Mm. So after you stitch them, then you just fuzz them up. Oh, that's great. Adds a little texture. Crinkled fabric, wrinkled fabric with beads and extra rhinestones added. There's probably about 15 yards of beads just on the front of this, but that we make like, it easy. That looks like a real Mardi Gras vest. It's, and Mardi Gras season's going to be here before we know it. The extra ribbon that's along the lapel area is couched. And is that ultra suede on the lapel? That is an ultra suede fake lapel, so it's sort oh. of cheater sewing. Oh, wonderful. We love cheater sewing. Absolutely. <laughs> A linen vest, this is handkerchief linen with beads along with quarter inch ribbon and eighth inch ribbon. It's the same techniques as on the vest that I'm wearing. I was just going to say it looks very similar to the one you're wearing and this is beautiful the way the, the different subtleties in the ribbons and the uh, beads show up. You know Sharon, we, lo we ran out of ribbon in the course of putting the vest together so when we purchased more mm -hmm. the navy ribbon was a different color. But you really can't tell because it's just a subtle change of it color. Looks, it looks totally planned. <laughs> We're not matching. Remember matching, going outside mm. the fabric store and mm -hmm. making sure everything matched perfectly? We don't have to worry about that That's anymore. That's great. Now, these are some wonderful vests. They're all from the same pattern, as is the basic vest pattern. And the basic vest pattern does have the cheater lapel on it. It looks like it's a lapel, but it's actually not. It's a suede or other fabric that is stitched in place. And the welts are stitched in place, too. It's just a basic oh, piece of fabric great. that's stitched. 
Now you notice that most of the vests have buttons, but I don't like to do buttonholes, and I know I'm never going to button these vests, but I do like to have wonderful buttons on mm -hmm. my garments. Yes, I have some pretty ones of mine too. And, and you did well buttonholes. I did bound buttonholes, darling. <laughs> <laughs> The turquoise bag down below is a suede with some of your heavier threads couched. So you can take a basic fabric and add some of the heavier threads uh, without a problem. We use special feet on the machine. Oh, that's great. And um, we're going to be seeing some of the uh, specialized feet. And when we get back, we're going to be doing some texturizing. Show us how to crinkle this fabric. Well, we're working with a yard piece of cotton. I picked up the selvage. This is a wet piece. It went through the rinse cycle of the washing machine, and I'm just wadding it up. It's no set, really, amount of wrinkles. You just, however your finger, fingers can walk up the side. Then I want to start twisting, and it really is easier to do if you have a buddy, so I'm going to grab my friend here and twist the fabric. We're going to twist this until it starts twisting on top of itself and you end up with this big wadded mess. Put some rubber bands, string or whatever around this section and then put it in the dryer. Well this is one that I had prepared previously and I just put these little ponytail holders around. That works fine. It adds to the wrinkles. Yeah it sure does. So let's, let's take a look at it and see let's what it does. It takes about uh, three or four times in the dryer, yeah, several days. It took days. a good while. It took a good so while. So it's not something you plan to start in the morning and start and sewing on. You're not going to wear it that night? No, you're not going to. No. <laughs> well, okay, let's see what kind of, let's see what kind of wonderful wrinkles we have here. Can you believe us? Years ago we wanted to press the wrinkles out of our fabric and nowadays we want to we want to keep the wrinkles. Would we you can't mind? make up our minds, can yeah, we? That reminds me, if we have some, uh, it, does this work better with a, a, a natural fiber or is this going to work with a, with a polyester fabric? Rayons. You know what rayon looks like when it comes out of the washing machine. Oh yeah, nasty. We've used rayons, <laughs> linens, cottons, wools, denims. I have used some blends. Mm -hmm. But if, as long as it wrinkles, you're fine. If it didn't wrinkle, then you're not out any fabric anyway. This has some wonderful wrinkle lines in it. Well, I want to hold these wrinkles in place. I don't want to have to, to work with this in this soft. So what we're going to do is add some interfacing to the back side of it. Now, Linda, this is 45 inches across. How, about how wide would we want to stretch out a 45-inch piece of fabric since we've uh, crinkled this on the lengthwise of the grain? You're going to lose about 15%. A 45-inch width fabric goes down to about 30 inches. Okay. But if you're working with a linen or a rayon, or if you like an abundance of wrinkles, it may even go down to 25 inches. Sure. So you're the designer. You get to decide. Okay. There, I lay it out on the ironing board with the wrong side up and sort of play with the wrinkles till I like the looks of them. Now, you're going to press some interfacing on this, but you're going to press it blindly. But you can take a look at the wrinkles and make sure they're smoothed out some. So we're going to use what kind of what kind of interfacing? Just a fusible or what? This is a fusible. It's a knit. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter to us today, but it, I want you to be aware that it gives on the crosswise grain. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't give much on the lengthwise grain. So it probably would be good to keep it going uh, which direction? I like the, the width going with the width of the fabric. Okay. And actually, one little trick is that this interfacing is now available 60 inches wide. Oh, that's great. So I cut the interfacing in half, and I use that 30 inches as a guide as how much I wrinkle. Oh, that's perfect. We found in playing with a lot of different fabrics that most of the cottons went down from 45 inches to about 30. So that gives me a gauge. Now, Sharon, we're going to break a lot of rules today. Oh, that's good. So this is one of them. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. Yeah. And so we're going to to not really worry about hard, fast rules. It's simply a guide. Mm -hmm. So 30 inches is a good happy medium. 45, 40 to 45 inches is good for 60 inch width fabric if you're crinkling some of that. And all of that's gonna be explained in your book, isn't it? Yes, that is explained Great. in the book. Good. 
Now the interfacing has pebblies on one side. Mm -hmm. Can you feel the pebblies? Right, that will be the side, side that, that we're goes. Use. Yeah, we're going to put that next to the wrong side of your fabric. Now another thing you need to be aware of on the fabric is sometimes the wrong side looks just as pretty as the right side. Or sometimes that's the contrast that you need in a garment. Mm -hmm. So you decide what's the right and what's the other side of the fabric. So we we're going to totally be the designer here. Yeah, you're totally yeah. the designer. This is the pebbly side of the interfacing going on the wrong side of the fabric and you need to use a good steam iron to fuse this. So you put the iron down, pick it up, put the iron down, pick it up. All right, we wouldn't want to slide the iron because we don't want to just slide our wrinkles. We want these wrinkles this yeah. time, Sherry. So we're not going to, we don't want to press the wrinkles out. We don't want to iron the daylights out of it. <laughs> and the wool setting on your iron is generally sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing, it doesn't take you real long to find out if you've got the wrong side of the interface. Oh, yes. It's oh, either yes. stuck to your iron or it's stuck to the fabric, one of the two. That's right. I prefer it stuck to the fabric. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And then you will have pressed in the wonderful wrinkles. That's great. Now we're at the machine with Linda, and she's going to show us how to use some of our decorative stitches on the sewing machine to do some of these special techniques. What are we going to do first, Linda? We're going to work with ribbon. And I have a selection of quarter-inch ribbon. This particular one is double-faced, and it really doesn't matter whether it's double-faced or single-faced. What's important is it's the color that you want. We're not mm -hmm. trying to blend any special colors on this project. We want to use a variety of colors. It's not like we used to have everything match perfectly. This is a brand new ribbon that's put out by Capital Imports and it has a ruffled edge. And I think I'm going to start off with the wider ribbon and then work my way into the quarter inch ribbon and then down into the eighth inch ribbon. That would be good for overlapping. Yes. You always start wider and go nar mm -hmm. narrower. I'm working with a honeycomb stitch today, and I have an, a rayon embroidery thread in the needle. I have a regular thread in the bobbin, and I'm using the honeycomb stitch as the setting is on the machine. Now, when you push the button on the machine, you're telling the machine to make the stitch the way it wants to. When you adjust your stitch width and your stitch length, you're telling the machine to do it the way that you want to. Now, I've got a little tuck in there. So that's a good spot for me to overlap something else. I just fixed it by lifting my presser foot with the knee lift. I'm going to change my stitch length just a little bit so you can see that look. I wouldn't change it on one project, but I would play with it on a, on a small piece just to decide what stitching I preferred. Oh, I like it smaller. That looks Isn't great. it pretty smaller? Yeah. And it just fills in the satin that's at the beginning of our fabric. And it looks now like you, we have a little bit of a ruffle on the outside edge. Yeah, we, yes. Now we have a little boo-boo there, and we're going to use that to our advantage rather than taking it out. We're going to sew another row of stitching on top of it using a different color ribbon. And this time, I think I'll work with the quarter-inch ribbon. And I believe I'll even switch the stitch. I'm going to switch over to uh, the G two section and do the feather stitch. And one thing that's fun about this stitch is that you can adjust your width length according to the size ribbon you're working with. And this one, the way that the quarter inch works beautifully with the machine set the way it's supposed to. Oh, that's wonderful. Again, I'm going to change my stitch width a little bit. I'm going to change my stitch length a little bit, and I just bypassed the spot that I wanted to cover up. Oh, yes. But you're getting a good... <laughs> we'll, we'll get that one with the next ribbon. <laughs> the feather stip is one of my favorite stitches. Now let's take a look at the eighth inch ribbon. And you have a choice with the eighth inch ribbon. It's really about halfway in between the open toe foot and the um, braiding foot. So you could use a choice. You have a choice. You could use either one of these ribbons. 
I'm going to switch this time to another decorative stitch. Let's just try this one. And you notice when I stitch with it that it's a little bit wider than my ribbon. I'm going to aim towards my spot here and see if I can't cover some of this up. So again, I'm going to change my stitch width and I might even change my stitch length. Now that one's a little bit small, so let's make it a little bit longer. There are numerous stitches on your machine that work beautifully with couching. And I know we're working with ribbon now, but you can also work with some of the heavier threads that are designed to be used with the serger. Mm -hmm. And I have one of the metallic ones here. And I've put it inside the foot. This is foot number six, our regular applique foot. Yes, and it comes with a machine. And on a good day, I can get three threads through there, three of oh, the heavier great. threads, mm -hmm. when I'm working with um, a, a needle threader from the serger. Mm -hmm. When you stitch over that thread, you have a narrower look. And this piece shows a wonderful array of some of the heavier threads. Actually, this piece shows all the heavier threads. Mm -hmm. Some of them are in the bobbin as the decorative stitch along here. And then some of them are the same type of metallic threads. Notice the meandering all over the fabric. That certainly is meandered. Yes, it's fun to sew crooked. This new product presentation with Hollis Turnbow is brought to you by Quilts Plus, the only complete source for all your quilting and other heirloom sewing supplies. Hollis has brought a lot of stencils to show us today, and he's going to give us a little quick tour here of the stencil world. <laughs> Probably next to rotary cutting, Sharon, stencils can be the most cost-effective and time-saving device mm -hmm. that you can have. Um, stencils are made to put the design onto the finished quilt. There is one author that wrote a book and said it's not quilted until, or it's not finished until it's quilted, and that's certainly true because the quilting is really what adds the spice to the quilt. We can either freehand draw it, which people, uh, you know, run in fear for with even suggesting that, <laughs> or you can trace it out of a book, which is time more consuming. Time consuming. Yes. Or you can go out and spend a dollar and fifty nine cents up to three dollars or so and have a very precisely cut cut plastic stencil. And that's what I want to show you, uh, the stencils and, and some very specialized stencils that we have. Very traditional designs. This looks like it's for a border in a corner. Border in a corner here. These are also border stencils. Here is a block stencil. And on stencils, you'll notice that they will all have some kind of a number on it. Yes. And in this particular manufacturer's, the last number indicates the size of the design. As well as this one. As well These as are this one. Two of the same design. Yes. One is an 8 inch and one is one a 10 is inch. One is a 10 inch. So we give the quilter the option there. Now, the difference in the green and the blue here is the blue are the ones that are in the manufacturer's catalog. The green is a special series which the stencil company refers to it as its designer stencils, mm -hmm. and those are very specialized quilting. We have stencils specifically done for machine quilting. Those are the continuous line. Continuous line is a very key word in it. Yes. Now that I am, um, you know, people have, have really uh, tend to speak down to you when you say machine quilting, but now that I can do it, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I want to show especially this on the wall. A very talented designer in Colorado by the name of Harry Walner has done a series of continuous line designs, and all of hers are put in a packet of various particular designs, and this is the way it would look. Now, the Dimensions Collection, which is what this design is from, is printed like this. The dark shadows here is where you would put that very detailed meandering quilting in here. I see. And that's what gives you dimension. It certainly does. It makes it very three-dimensional. Very th three-dimensional, as you say. Uh, the stencil company has al already developed one that's, that's in a stencil, so very, very easy to do. But this is what stencils are for. Very cost-effective when it comes to time. Uh, very easy to manipulate and adjust the particular size that you need. That's great. It looks like it's going to make the job of transferring the design much easier and much more accurate. It certainly does.
This new product presentation with Hollis Turnbow has been brought to you by Quilts Plus, the only complete source for all your quilting and other heirloom sewing supplies. Linda's book, Texture with Textiles, has just won an award. Linda, tell us about this award. The PCM Product Excellence Award recognizes outstanding achievement in the design, packaging, and marketing of books and products in the craft, needlework, and sewing industries. They are represented by Profitable Craft Merchandising Magazine, a recognized authority in the creative industry for more than three decades. My book was voted number one in the sewing category. Well, I know you're excited about that. Yes. And isn't this your first publication? Yes, it is. So that was another thrill. That's wonderful. And I can't wait to see another. Is there going to be another one pretty soon? Yeah, wait a, just a month. Oh, well, great. And what kind of things are going to be in it? A little more of the same texturizing techniques. It's called Texture with Textiles 102. Oh, so this is our second course. Yes. Wonderful. And uh, will the, some of the techniques that are used on these beautiful garments here be in it? Yes. Now, the crinkling that you see up the front of the coat is the same that we did earlier mm -hmm. in the first book. Mm -hmm. We have some of the couching techniques that you saw today. There's edge stitching of some of the heirloom. Uh, but what's gonna, one of the techniques that will be in the new book is some of the beading, which you saw how to put together the, the uh, beading from Capital Imports mm -hmm. combined with the crinkling and quick piecing. Mm -hmm. Some of the pin tucks that we did are also along the edge of the coat. So this particular garment has a variety of techniques from both books. This garment is from an invitational show. So there were 15 designers across the country that were invited to use their fabric and make a garment. Oh, that's they beautiful. sent the fabric to me, and this is the garment that I chose to make. Well, I'd like to give Brunhilde a little spin here so we can okay, uh, the back's just see as the wonderful. back. The back is incredible. This is a beautiful collar. Thank you. The, the pin tucking again along the outer edge and some of the quick piecing, but as you get to the center, you see the crinkled fabric with couching of some acrinix threads combined with an applique. So we didn't do the, uh, the sequin piece and the beaded piece. That was actually a purchased applique. So oh, it's okay great. to cheat a little bit. They sure, do a beautiful that's great. job of that. You're right. We have crinkling down in the lower edge of the coat combined with lots of couching. And I see that we don't need to put the um, stitching all over the, the, the fabric. We can, we can leave some areas that are unstitched because of our fusible interfacing. Absolutely. And as Brunhilde comes around, we can see that we also have a pocketbook to match. You have to finish your outfit. Absolutely. And accessories complete the outfit. This is one of my handbag designs. Uh, using all the tidbits that were left over. And when I say tidbits, we had to cut the hem out of the coat to have enough <laughs> of the, the crinkling with the couching to use in the back. You can see more of the, the uh, couching on the sleeve. Area. You know, it's interesting how sewers have to confess everything. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> but I don't tell you whether there's any wrong stitches. <laughs> Only you know those. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about this uh, beautiful ja Ecru jacket in the back. The Ecru jacket was designed for Capital Imports for one of their invitational shows. And in the lower edge, you see the crinkling combined with the couching of the ribbons, along with their gorgeous embroideries. Um, there's beading with the ribbon floating through. Uh, actually, there's over 100 yards of lace and embroidery incorporated into the coat. Mm. And it's been combined with some of the pin ticking techniques, too. They make gorgeous laces and embroideries. Yes, Wonderful they do. trims. Yeah. Capital Imports is just the best for those. Absolutely. And I love your little bouquet of roses up there. That's just fabulous. The linen rose, the lace carnation, and in the embroidery carnation. Well, Linda, this has really been fun to have you with us today. I've had a great time with this technique. I've really enjoyed visiting with you, and I hope you'll come back and see us again. I look forward to that. Thank you very much for having me, Sharon. In the coming weeks, we will have more delightful guests and new products. There will be many exciting techniques to show you. They will range from quilting to French machine sewing, machine embroidery to lace making. And all of them will be heirlooms by design.
Heirlooms by Design has been brought to you by Capital Imports, by Omnigrid, and by Quilts Plus. If you'd like more information on the supplies and techniques used in today's show, then drop us a note to Quilts Plus, 1211 Noble Street, Anniston, Alabama, 36201. That's Quilts Plus, 1211 Noble Street, Anniston, Alabama, 36201. Sharon will be back with more Heirlooms by Design next week.